Choosing vanity over piety is often punished in fairy tales. And among the most iconic of these fairy tale punishments has to be Hans Christian Andersen's The Red Shoes. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz. Ding! Once upon a time lived a little girl who was a nice girl and quite pretty, but she was so poor she couldn't even afford shoes for her feet. She went barefoot in summer, and in winter she wore thick wooden shoes that chafed her at the ankles. An old woman in the village, who happened to be able to make shoes, took pity on the poor girl and made her a pair of red shoes out of scraps of cloth. They were hastily put together and quite humble, but they did the job. The little girl's name was Karen. I know. I know. Get those Karen jokes out of your system now. The first time Karen wore her scrappy red shoes was the day her mother was buried. Red shoes were completely improper for mourning, but they were all the girl had, so you can't blame her for wearing them at this point. She walked behind her mother's simple wicker coffin sadly, in ragged shoes with no stockings. As the funeral processed, a carriage rode by housing a wealthy old woman. She saw Karen mourning in her sad little red shoes and took pity on her, and she approached the parson. I'd like to adopt that little girl. I can take good care of her now. Wow, thank you, ma'am! Was it my red shoes that made you want to adopt me? Heavens no! Those shoes are hideous and they're going right in the incinerator! The old woman provided Karen with some new clothes. She also received a bit of an education, learning to read and sew. Now that she was dressed nicely and taken care of, her beauty was even better showcased. And her neighbors weren't the only ones who commented on her good looks. They might say you're pretty, but you and I both know you're beautiful. One day, the queen visited the town with her daughter. Everyone in town flocked to see them, including Karen. The princess was dressed beautifully, rather simply, all in white, no train, no crown, but with a beautiful pair of red patent leather shoes. And Karen salivated for them. There is nothing like a pair of red shoes! When the day came for Karen's confirmation, she got a brand new outfit and got to pick out some shoes to go with it. They visited the finest shoemaker in town to have them made. Take a look around, my girl, and tell the man what you'd like made. You know I can't see anything with these old eyes anymore. All sorts of shiny slippers and boots were showcased in glass cases. And Karen spotted a pair of bright red patent leather shoes just like the princess had sported. OMG, look at these! Ah, yes! Those were a pair I made for a duchess, but the fit wasn't quite right. Do you want to try them on? Do I? The shoes fit Karen perfectly. And because the old woman couldn't see well enough to decipher their color, the girl got to take them home. As Karen walked down the aisles of the church, she felt everyone's eyes upon her. Even the eyes of the saints and apostles, in their painted portraits and stained glass windows. Karen saw the pastor going through the motions of her baptism, but her mind was occupied with only one thing. I've got the prettiest damn feet in this whole congregation! Karen's salacious shoes caused such a stir, it got back to the old woman after the service. Karen, how dare you! Red shoes in church? I am completely scandalized. You must only wear your humble black shoes in church. But they're so old! This isn't a debate. The next Sunday, for the Holy Communion, Karen looked at her shoe closet resignedly. <sighs> I'm doing it. Hell yeah! On the way to the church, Karen and the old woman met an old soldier. He held a crutch and had a very long beard, and his beard was a curious red color. He bowed low to them. Would you ladies like a shoe shine? Check these tootsies out, old man. Oh my, what beautiful red shoes. Why, those shoes would be perfect for dancing. The soldier tapped the sole of each red shoe, then seemed to speak right to them. May these shoes never come off when you dance. At church, Karen couldn't get enough of everyone's eyes on her. The shoes completely occupied her mind throughout the whole service, so much so that she forgot to participate in the psalms and prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy shoes. Thy red shoes come, thy shoes be done, on feet as it is in shoes. Give us these shoes, our daily shoes, 
And forgive us our shoes, as we have forgiven our red shoes. And shoes us not into shoe station, but shoe liver shoes from Shoeville. For shoes are the red shoes, the red shoes, and the red shoes. Shoe men. The old soldier was waiting for them outside the church at the end of the service. Oh, those red shoes are beautiful for dancing. I'll show you what they can do, old man. Karen did a little two-step for the old man, and then realized that she couldn't stop. She danced right around the corner of the church, and the coachman had to run after her. He picked her up, but her feet kept moving. He set her in the carriage, and her dancing feet kicked the old lady. Karen managed to wrench the shoes off her feet, and that finally gave her rest. They locked the shoes away in a cupboard, but Karen would still open it and look at them longingly. Soon after, the old woman became irrevocably ill. She required constant care, and depended on Karen to nurse her. But one night, Karen received an invitation to a very fancy ball in town. Karen looked at the old woman who had cared for her, all laid out in her sickbed. I should probably stay home and take care of the old woman. I'll just take a peek at my red shoes. There's no harm in that. Well, there's no harm in putting them on, either. You know what? This old dame is gonna die no matter what I do, so I might as well go to the ball. Karen abandoned the old woman and showed up to the ball in her fancy red shoes. And the moment she stepped onto the dance floor, the red shoes became animated again. Karen had no control over them. She would try to dance one way, and the shoes would dance her the other. They danced her right out of the ballroom, out to the street, and past the town gates. Those red shoes danced her into a thick, dark wood, where she saw the shine of a red beard through the trees. What beautiful shoes for dancing! <laughs> Karen tried to pull the red shoes off, but they had attached themselves to her feet and she couldn't stop dancing. The shoes danced her through fields and valleys, through all kinds of weather, through the day and into the night. They danced her into a graveyard, where she grasped the headstone trying to stop, but to no avail. The shoes danced her back to her church, where a terrifying angel stood, brandishing a silver sword. Dance, you proud little heathen. Dance in your red shoes till you perish. Dance until your flesh rots from your bones. Dance door to door, wherever vain little girls reside. Haunt those bitches. Dance forever. Dance on. Have mercy on me, please. Karen's horrible curse went on. The shoes danced her past her old home, where she saw a coffin carrying out her adopted old mother. The shoes danced her on into the dark night, through thorn bushes which tore her up until she was bloody. The shoes danced her straight across the wastelands. Suddenly she recognized where they had brought her. She was at the home of the town's executioner, and she banged her hands on his window. Please, sir, answer your door! You look like a little girl who's gotten what's coming to her. Shall I finally put you out of your misery? My axe is quivering to take off that head. Not my head, you creep! I need to repent! But for the love of all that is holy, please remove these cursed feet! The executioner did as she asked, striking off her feet with a blow of his axe. And even then the shoes continued to dance, with her little bloody footstumps still in them. They danced away from her and into the forest. The executioner fashioned a pair of wooden feet for Karen, as well as a pair of crutches. Karen was so relieved, she kissed his hands. I'll go to the church now. They'll see I'm repentant. She hobbled to the church as fast as she could. But when she arrived, her red shoes and the disembodied feet were waiting for her at the church door. Hey, bitch. No! She bitterly cried all week long, and the next Sunday, she tried again. All right, I have cried and suffered for a week. Surely that's enough to appease these monsters? But once again, the shoes were waiting for her at the door. You can't just show up here and think you're in the clear. You have to really feel it. <laughs> Karen went to the home of the pastor and his wife and begged them to take her on as a servant. She refused wages. She only wanted to have a roof over her head and be in the presence of good people. 
The parson's wife took pity on her, and they took her in. And Karen became a faithful and serious girl that week. She listened to and partook in the evening prayers, and she became a caretaker for their children. Miss Karen, wouldn't it be amazing to wear petticoats and ruffles and patent leather shoes like the princess? Don't speak of it, child. Okay. The next Sunday, the pastor invited Karen to church, but she shook her head with sad eyes. She took to her room and opened her hymnal. The wind carried the chords of the church organ to her, and Karen cried. Please help me, O oh Lord. The sun shone brightly, and suddenly that terrifying angel was before her. But he had left his sword at home this time. Instead, he carried a branch of red roses. He touched the ceiling of the room with it and each of its walls, and the room opened itself. Karen suddenly found herself in the church, though she wasn't sure if the angel had brought her to the church or the church to her. The pastor and his family greeted her, praising her for joining them. It was by God's own mercy that I am here. Sunlight streamed through the windows, and a sunbeam shone right on Karen. The light filled her up, and she felt joy and peace within her. Beam me up, Jesus! And folks, Karen died right there in her church pew. Her soul coasted along that sunbeam straight up to heaven, where she finally never had to think of those red shoes again. The end. Fun facts about the red shoes. Hans Christian Andersen's stepsister was named Karen, and if from the story it seems like he didn't like her much, you're correct. In the collection of Hans Christian Andersen tales I have, this story is actually classified as a story written for an adult audience, though I'm sure plenty of children have been scarred by it. Hans' father was a cobbler, so it's no surprise that shoes come up a lot as a theme or as a status symbol in his stories. And a specific incident from Hans' childhood directly inspired this story. A local rich lady had had some red silk sent to Hans' father to have them made into dancing shoes for her daughter. Hans' father made up the shoes, which he combined with some expensive red leather from his own supply. When the woman came to pick up the shoes, she hated them. She told Hans' father, All you've done is spoil the red silk I sent you. And Hans' father retorted, Then I might as well spoil my red leather, too. And he cut the shoes to pieces right in front of her. What a fantastic tantrum that led to one of history's most iconic Karens. If you enjoy my work, you can support me on one of these platforms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon for another fucked up fairy tale. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz.